yeah, this is the second talk. Like I said, we're gonna talk about Kubernetes and Crystal. She's actually gonna do all the heavy lifting. And here, just to tell us the very short story. So, Crystal, you wanna introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. I'm Crystal. I'm based in Greece and I'm a member of the last observability software engineer. And Miguel, I'm based in London and I'm a product manager working in Cloudnative Observability. So this is my story. Basically, I assume that there is nothing that people can think about that what do they have to do in common. The main thing is actually like I wanted to be a hipster at some point, but I could never grow a beard. And I mean, I, I did have a plan and share, but it didn't work out. So one thing that I can learn from being a, trying to be a hipster is I love crab beer. So once I was in New York and I wanted, I, I head over to Brooklyn Brewery. Who likes Brooklyn beer? That you don't want to drink. And I decided that I'm gonna have some beers with some friends after some time. Later, I decided, okay, you know what? I need to get back home. I need to get back to my hotel in Union Square. And I thought, I'm gonna be a New Yorker this time. I'm gonna try and make it, like people think that I'm a local. So I call my old reliable yellow card. And I decided, you know, I'm not gonna tell this guy to take me to Union Square. I'm just gonna give him directions. So I, I was working on my phone and I decided I could save one minute if I take this route. So I tried to be like very, very clever. And I did told the, the guy, you know what, just take the Queen, Queen's Midtown Tunnel, then down on Pitt Avenue and drop me off in Union, in Union Square. And off we went. Uh, that was my command to the, to the guy here. And I fell asleep in the car. <laughs> Not 19 minutes later, but six hours later, I woke up and this was the scene I was sleeping and I was reaching out like just a few meters from where I had taken the cab. And I said, what happened here? What happened? And basically the Queen's Midtown Tunnel was closed. So like many of you folks have been familiar, what happens when the imperative instructions don't work? So the guy told me, what do you want to do next? I said, forget about it. I'm going declarative. I'm going to take an Uber. And I, I don't care how you get me there. I just need to get there. So Part of the story is true. The reality is that I really did take uh, the M line and it took me like 15 minutes and <laughs> minutes a day. I did not sleep in a couple of hours. And the, to the too long didn't listen is, yeah, we all love the resilience that Kubernetes brings to our work. However, it is not a problem solved. Observability, it brings a lot of challenges in observability. Like you all folks know, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you know that it's a new, new meaning for scale. Before we had 100 VMs, you have VM were in the middle, 100 VMs, it was easy to control. Now you have thousands of pods, it's not the same job. You have this written nature of Kubernetes, it's not a single API, so you have to hit different APIs. Do you want to monitor the control plane? Do you just want to monitor the nodes? Do you want by the way, you, you're also getting two different tools. You're gonna get data into different areas. So how do you correlate that air, that data coming into different, coming from different tools, copy pasting is a, is a hassle. And the last bit is interpreting Kubernetes. It's not easy, it requires expertise. It's not just about tell me what happened. You, you need to know like where, what you're doing. Um, that being said, that was the story. Now I give, the room for Christos to do the, the hard part here. So we already started talking about beers, so that's a signal that I don't need to waste a lot of time from you. So hello again. And uh, I will start with a little reminder of uh, a short reminder of how a lot start looks today. Most of us uh, were already familiar, more or less, with this. So we have Kibana for visualization, Elasticsearch for uh, for the storage, and on the interest part we have Logstash and Bits with Elastic Agent. So today we will be focusing mostly on the interest part and specifically on Elastic Agent, which is the new generation uh, type of uh, 
ingesting data to Elasticsearch, to Elasticsearch. So in order to get our Kubernetes data uh, to Elastic, we need an agent, a shipper, collector, name it, whatever you want. So we have Elastic agent today. This is the most recent uh, shipper that Elastic offers today. And it's quite similar to what was pitched in the past. How many of you have used Beats in the past or you are still using it? Okay. How many of you you are using Elastic Agent? Okay, fair enough. So it's quite similar. And uh, when it comes to logs collection and cost monitoring, uh, the experience is, is the same. But Elastic Agent is coming with uh, several uh, benefits uh, compared to Beats. So instead of having multiple agents, file bit for logs, metric bit for metrics, and so on, you have one single agent. So this makes it easier to deploy and manage it uh, compared to having uh, multiple different agents. And of course, with various different configurations, now you have all your configuration, a last agent knows how to manage it and start the proper shipper for it, either it is logs or it is metrics or uh, whatever that you want to collect. And last but not least, we have the option for central management, which means that if we want it, we can enroll our last agents to a fleet, and then these last agents will be uh, centrally managed by us from fleet, uh, which means that we can upgrade their versions centrally, we can up upgrade, up update their configurations, define a new input, uh, start monitoring something new, all these from a central management tool inside Kibana. Um, so this is the managed version, and this is how an, uh, an ingest configuration looks like today in Elastic Agent. This is pure YAML, and here we can define all the important information from, uh, for agent, uh, the type of integration, here it is metrics, we want to collect metric, metrics from uh, Redis workloads, so we specify also the shipper to use, here we specify to use the info metric set from the metric fit module and the endpoint, metric endpoint and uh, integration specific settings. Below I can uh, define the same for logs, all in the same uh, configuration file, the last agent will take care of it. So yeah, this might be okay for many of us, but uh, hanging YAML, it's not always easy and you might be wondering already, how should I know all these settings? Uh, what are the defaults, what I really need, and what I can uh, leave to uh, Elastic Agent to decide uh, what are the default values there. So this is why Elastic is coming with a wide list of integrations. Uh, we call them also packages. And within a package, for example, in the Redis package, we package everything uh, that is related to this integration. Uh, we have a manifest, which is the specification for the integration which settings uh, are required, what are the defaults, um, Elasticsearch uh, map, mappings for the fields, so as to store the uh, data to, to Elasticsearch following specific mappings. Uh, Kibana assets like um, visualizations, dashboards, and everything that you can imagine that is useful for integration, everything is uh, packaged in these uh, Elastic packages. So the only thing that you need to do is to install this package and Elastic Agent will install this new input for you and you will have everything there. So this is how it looks like, how it looks like in the managed version of agent with, um, I mentioned earlier that you enroll your last agent to the fleet and then centrally from uh, the Kibana page, you can navigate uh, into the integration page. You can select an integration here. I select the Redis integration and I can specify the values for the uh, integration itself, uh, like from where to collect the logs, uh, which, uh, where are the endpoints, and everything that is specified within the integration is available there. And when I save this, Elastic Agents will retrieve this information, will install the packet for me, and uh, all the fleet of my agents um, will start collecting uh, data from this uh, workload, from this target workload. So this is one version of the last agent. This is the managed version because, and it requires uh, like using Kibana UI to specify the integrations and add new inputs. But if you don't like this, you can uh, use your own tools to 
uh, maintain and manage your configurations. Uh, many of us like to understand configuration as uh, and manage configuration as code, either in a GitLab repository or using some tooling. So in that case, you can use a standalone version of agent, uh, which means that you don't care about the user interface. You specify everything in your YAML configurations, and you are responsible for maintaining this and uh, version controlling this in your GitHub repository or whatever. And this works if you have GitOps approach uh, used in your uh, organization or you have specific security uh, requirements. So today we will be using both of them in, in our demo. So as we illustrate that, uh, no matter what you use, it's the same, the end result is the same. So of course, uh, you cannot let UI uh, just sit in there. You can leverage UI even if you want to uh, use a standalone version because you can use the UI to shape and construct your policies, your input configurations, and then everything that you have specified through the UI you can download it as a YAML, put it into um, a config map in your in Kubernetes and uh, just use this. Or you can use a specific dialog for Kubernetes and download the config map, which is ready to use with all the inputs uh, specified there, uh, credentials uh, so as to get connected to Elasticsearch and so on. Uh, so from UI, you can go to a GitOps approach really easy, uh, easily. So on Kubernetes now, Elastic Agent is installed as a demo set, which means that we have one Elastic Agent pod per node. And between these uh, demo set pods, we have a leader. We're using leader election to elect the leader between these pods, uh, which will be responsible for, uh, let's say, cluster level uh, duties. Uh, for example, cluster level monitoring is performed only once by the leader because we don't want to uh, duplicate data. So today, the inputs that we will be using in our demo are more or less uh, cluster level metrics from our Kubernetes cluster using leader election, node, uh, node level metrics from the Kubelets APIs, uh, system metrics from uh, the underlying node using the system packets, container logs from all the containers that are running from the nodes. Uh, all the containers are automatically discovered by Elastic Agent, and we are collecting logs from them. Uh, and when it's the log messages with uh, the proper Kubernetes metadata, uh, the node, the pod that belongs to, and so on. Uh, system logs from the nodes again. Uh, we also use uptime monitoring uh, because we want to check the health of our uh, services APIs. We will be discovering automatically Redis workloads, which means that um, we will discover uh, new workloads that are coming on the cluster and we will start uh, monitoring them using uh, the proper integration, the proper packets. In that case, it is the Redis integration and uh, APM data uh, traces from our applications. We automatically uh, instrument our pods and collecting traces from, uh, from our applications. So I talked a bit about auto discovery, dynamic workload discovery, uh, when I talked about the Redis workloads. So in Kubernetes, um, everything is uh, quite relative on our clusters. The workloads are coming and going. So we can, of course, define configurations beforehand and say that, OK, I plan to monitor this specific uh, type of applications. But then after a few minutes, something new is coming to run on the cluster. So I need, to, I need a way to automatically discover these new workloads and start collecting data from um, from these applications. So the last agent offers two, way, two ways to achieve this. It, one is the conditions-based auto discovery, and the other one is uh, by using the proper annotations. So with conditions, again, we have a simple input, and uh, we define the input there. Uh, it's a configuration for the Redis metrics, and we attach a specific condition on this input, which is the one on the right, and uh, we say uh, we we indicate to Elastic Agent that okay, whenever this con this condition becomes true, I want to enable this input and I want to uh, use this to start uh, monitoring up my workloads, my Redis workloads in that case. So if we can see uh, in this condition, we are using specific uh, syntax. We are using uh, dynamic variables that are coming from the Kubernetes environment. So in that case, this input 
we, this condition will only become true when there is a workload, that when there is a pod which um, has the label up equals to regis on my cluster. Whenever this is detected by a last agent, this input will be enabled. And if we see also here, uh, the endpoint uh, will be uh, dynamically uh, be populated uh, by using again the uh, pod IP from the Kubernetes environment. So this is great, this is okay, but this is quite static because if I'm an administrator on the cluster, I need to know beforehand uh, the type of or the type of the types of the workloads, and I need if I want to add uh, something new, for example, now I have read this tomorrow. I, I want to monitor uh, Nginx applications. I need to uh, update my configurations, specify the conditions again, and then restart my agents so as to uh, reapply this new configuration, uh, which does not feel so much, or this is not so dynamic. So here we have another uh, more advanced feature, let's say, which is the hints based on discovery. So as an administrator, the only thing that I need to uh, do is to enable the hints feature in my configuration. And then as a user, the, the people that are uh, going to deploy workloads from the cluster, if they decide that they want to enable monitoring elastic observability, they can just provide the proper annotations, uh, the proper hints, so in that case, by using the proper hints from mm -hmm. annotations, I specify that I want to monitor this specific pod by using the Redis packet, the Redis integration. And I also I can specify the, uh, some settings if I want, otherwise the defaults will be used, uh, which is really uh, useful when we don't know the workloads beforehand. And uh, as an administrator, it makes your life easy uh, because you don't need to uh, update your configurations all the time. Um, okay, last but not least, APM instrumentation. Again, as workloads are coming, applications are coming to run on the cluster, uh, you want to automatically um, instrument your applications. We want to attach our APM agents on the pods so as to start collecting traces, application performance metrics from our applications. So the way that we implement this is by using the mutate uh, webhook mechanism. Uh, we have a mutate webhook, and whenever, is pod, whenever a pod is deployed on the Kubernetes uh, cluster, whenever the request goes to the Kubernetes mm. API, uh, we mutate the request and we add an additional init container. And this init, this init container is responsible for downloading the APM agent and uh, just installs, put the APM agent there inside the pod by using the shared volume. So automatically we instrument our um, applications. Again, we're using a kind of hint, a specific uh, annotation to use. So we only <coughs> enable the APM instrumentation for the, for the pods that are annotated properly. Um, okay, so now we have our data into Elastic. Uh, what we can do? We can search them, we can search within our logs, we can uh, explore our uh, metrics, for example, we can uh, search for patterns and try to extract useful information. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the next step for us as a lot of observability is uh, to define actionable, actionable observability rules uh, regarding the latency, the resource saturation, and common errors, specifically on Kubernetes. So as a team, as a lot of observability, we provide a set of uh, rules that users can uh, install on the cluster and can uh, really quickly uh, have something for their clusters and uh, for example having alerting uh, having uh, notifications into their slack uh, channels for example when something happens in the cluster so we implement this uh, this alerting uh, mechanism by using elastic search watchers and elastic search, elastic search watcher uh, is a feature of elastic search and uh, yeah in the end you just specify a specific query for Elasticsearch. And this query will be uh, evaluated from time to time, uh, for example, every one minute or whatever you have set there. And you also, along with the uh, query, you specify condition. So the result of the query will be evaluated uh, as part of the condition. And whenever this condition becomes true, uh, an alert will be triggered and you will be notified about this. Um, so 
this is how it looks like. Uh, we'll specify the kernel commands uh, so as to execute them against your Elasticsearch cluster. And you, uh, in, in this way, you install automatically a new Kubernetes alert. In that case, it is an alert about, uh, it, it checks when uh, pods are <coughs> terminated with out of memory uh, queue termination status. And you will be notified in Slack uh, when something like this happens. Um, and if you don't want to mess with thresholds, SLOs, you don't know what threshold to use, for example, on your CPU usage for your cluster, you can leverage machine learning, which means that you can uh, specify machine learning job and you let, uh, you don't specify thresholds or uh, SLOs and you let machine learning do everything for you. So in that case, uh, we can check for the CPU usage of our nodes on the Kubernetes cluster. And whenever an anomaly is detected, the machine learning job automatically will inform us uh, about this because it is run in the background. So that's all in theory. Uh, we can uh, now quickly see all this in action. And is there any question before? Okay. So here uh, in my environment, I have uh, Kubernetes, a small Kubernetes cluster running on GKE. And uh, I have already uh, installed Elastic Agent. It is running on, on the cluster. So let me quickly show you. So here we have the daemon set. We have three Elastic Agent pods. And we have the APM attacher, which is the uh, the mutate webhook actually, uh, the application is possible for attaching the APM agents on the pods. And uh, let me, now I'm using standalone uh, version of agent. So I will just reapply the manifest just to be sure. And here we can see, uh, I hope that the font is okay. Uh, so this is the standard figure, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everything, everything got bigger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We will live with this. Sorry for this. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm using standalone agent. Uh, so, in that case, uh, I have everything defined uh, locally. Uh, it is uh, managed by, by, by myself. Uh, nothing is on the Kibana fleet. So I install this and uh, let's see what data uh, we have in. And uh, okay. So uh, if I go to Kibana, it is running on Elastic Cloud specifically. Um, I can start uh, by checking uh, how my infrastructure looks like. So here uh, I can see. Yeah, I hope it loads. Okay, uh, here I can see uh, what is going on on my cluster. I can see uh, how many nodes I have. I can see previews of the resource utilization on my cluster. And uh, here I see that the node is really burning. It's now almost 100% of CPU uh, utilization. Uh, I can dive more and group everything uh, by node, all the pods by node. And I can dive in more and see, for example, uh, how a pod looks like. For example, this Elastic Agent pod. I can see the metrics. No, no, these are the logs. I can see the logs of the pod. And yeah, I can search within them. I can correlate this information also uh, on the timeline of uh, the resource utilization of the pod. and. Um, I, can, I have also specified uptime uh, monitors. So here, for example, yeah, I forgot to mention that uh, I can also do more sophisticated groupings. Let me go back to my inventory. So if I go to the pods, I will group them by node again, and I can group, I can filter out using the Kubernetes metadata uh, so I, I only care about the 
a specific namespace here. I will use Memphis because I run Memphis on my local cluster uh, as an example. Okay, it works. So again, here I can uh, drill down more and see how Memphis uh, is behaving. So I also have uptime monitors, for example, for Memphis, um, checking the uh, status, uh, the health of the of this service. And I can see uh, the duration of the requests um, and all the requests here, uh, it is healthy. On the other hand, I have something really uh, bad on my cluster, It's which makes uh, this Flask API, uh, this Flask application uh, giving bad responses. So I, I need to check about it. Uh, I had an indicator back then uh, when I when I when we had this node uh, really uh, showing that the CPU utilization is really high. So and last but not least, the APM data that I have in I have a specific application. It's Java application. So uh, let's produce some traffic here. Okay, and sorry for the zoom. Yeah, it's stuck. I don't know why. Okay, I will use the other way. So I, I will load again the, the page. So here I can see the traces, uh, the transactions of this specific application, uh, the dependencies to the database, and I can analyze the performance, uh, the performance furthermore. More, uh, I can even uh, see the errors and analyze the stack stack trace of this error, specific error. And uh, last but not least, I also have uh, predefined. Um, predefined dashboards coming from the Kubernetes integration. So here I can see uh, how my Kubernetes cluster looks like, a uh, nice overview, uh, how many resources I have, uh, resource intensive pods regarding CPU or memory, uh, type of events or warnings on the cluster. I can drill down more on the uh, on specific resources and see the resource utilization of my nodes. Uh, same for pods, and yeah, uh, we can check uh, all the other resources if we want to. So yeah, now I will do something more interesting, which is uh, to deploy the Redis workload uh, that I promised earlier. And I expect that this workload will be automatically uh, discovered by Elastic Agent, and we will start getting data from it. So let me uh, deploy this on the cluster. And uh, so this is how the uh, this pod looks like. I have the annotations, uh, which uh, this is OK, I guess, right? The font size. OK. So I indicate here to use the Redis package, uh, specific settings also. And I expect that Elastic Agent will automatically discover it. And uh, if everything works, I expect that the Redis dashboard will be populated with data. So let's see. Okay, it works already. Uh, the data are really fresh. So this means that uh, the, the data collection started uh, just right now. So if I just expand the data, yeah, you can see that I have also uh, this workload up and down in the past uh, few hours. Uh, again, so uh, what else? So let me see my script. Okay, so last but not least, uh, we can also um, install an alert, a watcher. So here I have the curl command, so as to install the watcher on the cluster and uh, on Elasticsearch. And I will be looking for out of memory uh, killed pods. Uh, on the cluster and I will get notified on my Slack page, my Slack channel uh, regarding this. So let me quickly do this. Yeah, I send it uh, to Elastic and uh, let's see how, how this targets. Uh, yeah, I need to deploy also. 
a target pod. This pod uh, will be killed with out of memory uh, error because it's a quite memory intensive pod. Uh, it's a stress pod with uh, really high uh, memory utilization. So let me, let's see, let's wait a bit uh, for the message to arrive. Actually, I will also kill it to avoid being spammed. Okay, yeah, here we have the uh, notification. We didn't hear the uh, the familiar sound, but it worked. So now that I uh, have everything running with standalone mode, I can uh, see how it how similar are uh, the is, is the situation uh, when I'm using managed version of agent. So. This is the standalone mode with everything included uh, within in my uh, config maps in these Kubernetes uh, specs. And with, with managed mode of agent, uh, I don't have a config map. I just have the daemon set. And the only thing that I need to provide is the enrollment token, token for uh, fleet and a, a fleet URL so as to enroll uh, my agents. So let me quickly bring down everything, bring down Elastic agent, uh, the standalone one, and I will start the managed uh, agent, and I expect that the result will be the same. So, all right. So, if I go to Kibana now again, uh, I will use the Kubernetes cluster as an indicator, and I expect that I, I will see data flow uh, continue flowing in. Uh, let me. Yeah, I see that uh, data are still coming in and I can also use the uh, discover uh, page to, yeah, we, have, we had some downtown, downtime here, but uh, that was expected. And um, now if I go to uh, my fleet management console, I see that I have three agents enrolled. I can also see how my policies look like. Uh, this is a policy is uh, a group of, uh, it's a big configuration, let's say, with all the inputs defined inside there. So here I have uh, Redis input enabled Kubernetes and uh, synthetics uh, monitoring, which is the uptime monitoring. And if I, I can choose to view the policy and maybe download it, uh, so as to put it inside a config map um, and use it on my own management uh, tool. And, or I can uh, just go to a specific dialogue and download the uh, manifest as it is. Uh, so I can get a config map ready for me uh, with all the inputs defined inside it. Uh, all the uh, credentials are there, how to connect to Elastic. Uh, I can download it and reapply this. Uh, actually, this is what I did. So as to have the standalone version. Uh, uh, this is what you do is basically side, side routing the agent in the, in the Docker image? Uh, no, Elastic Agent is uh, already running as a Docker image. Mm -hmm. uh, what I do here is to download uh, a manifest so as to install it on the Kubernetes cluster mm -hmm. and have all the uh, all the settings uh, built in for me. So Excellent. all the integrations are baked in inside this config map. So I need to do nothing. So I don't, you don't... Just go back to the, the Kubernetes uh, build building uh, uh, metric. Yeah, yeah. And what, what if you want to side out in, 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 in an existing uh, uh, the Docker image definition? How would you do that? Uh, the Docker image of Elastic Agent. Mm -hmm. The features are there. Uh, we just talk about uh, configuration here. Mm -hmm. So the features are there. Uh, what I want to manage here is the configuration the observability configuration, okay. which means that I want to start a new work, monitoring a new workload. So I need to update my configuration and so on. The features are there. It's uh, it's on us to use them or not. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.
to roll out the faster. At the moment, we need to get some, maybe we have a branch in security. Yeah. We need to do to roll out new passwords. We have 1,000 nodes, 100 nodes. What is your strategy for this? Because I saw that you need to change it. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, this is kind of in incomplete. Uh, this is not the be uh, best practice to have the token, for example, here, plain text. Uh, the ideal approach would be to have a Kubernetes secret. So you will use, uh, let's say, responsibility to the Kubernetes native way, which is to use a secret. You, sti you are still not 100% uh, uh, protected, but it's more cloud native. Uh, so uh, that would be an, an approach um you will you would need to restart your agents most probably well, after you set the new password, you really need to restart yes the... unless you you are using the operator the elastic operator which uh makes it easy to manage the life cycle of uh, credential credentials but you need the operator to perform these actions for you uh i think that's all uh, from the demo uh what else do we have um, yeah, to sum it up, uh, this is uh, uh, the, the Elastic Observability uh, product. Uh, we like the feedback from our community. It's really great that we have all these people. Uh, thank you for coming. And uh, we really appreciate your feedback from uh, GitHub, uh, for example, issues, pull requests, if you want to contribute. Uh, we also have the forums that you can find us and we can discuss things. And um, yeah. Any questions? Otherwise, we can go for the beers now. It's the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so, how well does this work in a mixed environment? That way, you have all your machines with VMs or even GCP and each. Um. Because specifically, like building a call graph, for example. Yeah, it it like depends that. how well trained are the teams that operate. Uh, yeah, Elastic Agent is just another application that is running on the cluster. So it depends on how well trained is the team to manage hybrid clusters, for example. Uh, we can provide, uh, let's say, out of the box ways to uh, deploy Elastic Agent on Kubernetes as Kubernetes manifests. But when you need to do something more complex, like having hybrid clusters, uh, yeah, we need to reevaluate the approach and see how we can coordinate uh, the configuration and, ev and everything. Because if we can see here, the configurations are managed natively in Kubernetes as config nodes, for example. So if you have a more hybrid setup, uh, yeah, you need to use an extra layer maybe to like Ansible or uh, something like this to coordinate uh, everything between. I don't know if this answers the question, but we can discuss it more. Yeah, it's a uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so in the fleet manage mode, um, with the like the equivalent to the annotations, the configuration for like which uh, application is when I have APM on kind of thing. Um, if you update those because you're going to deploy a new application, does that happen automatically? Like the you set new configuration, do you have to redeploy anything, or does it just go from fleet into the last page? Um, so the question is, uh, what is uh, the difference between managed mode and standalone mode regarding annotations and hints? Yeah. Okay, so in standalone, it works like this, like uh, the uh, scenario that we illustrated. Uh, with uh, managed mode, uh, things are a bit more complicated. It is supported, but uh, it's still in beta, I think, uh, because <coughs> in, in managed mode, you need to, everything needs to go through fleet. So in that case, we need to notify from, from Kubernetes and from agents, we need somehow to notify fleet to update the configuration centrally and update then the fleet of the agents. Uh, but yeah, the idea is that it should work transparently uh, no matter which approach you use. The agent, but it's uh, one repository for the demo. Uh, repository for the demo. Uh, no, but we can share it. It's quite easy. Cool. We will do it. So the agent, it's a they will say yes. Yeah. So maybe I didn't understand correctly, but you said during the presentation, um, the agent in the end, um, they choose a leader. So for which reason then you need a leader? Um, yeah, that's uh, very interesting. So 
in order uh, we're collecting um kubernetes metrics from cube state metrics this is a third like a third party project of uh, the kubernetes ecosystem and uh this is installed on the kubernetes cluster before elastic so these uh let's say endpoints are unique per cluster so between the uh the daemon set pods if i say to all the pods start collecting metrics from this endpoint i will end up with having uh, multiple entries for the same data because i'm uh, scraping from a unique endpoint multiple times so in that case i elect the leader and i say that okay only the leader will enable this uh input let's say this configuration so in the end only the leader will start collecting cluster level metrics from a unique uh, endpoint of the cluster yeah my insight for working with Chris in the same team. Uh, each pod, we have a demon set because we have one pod running per node. So you have to think that each pod usually collects magic from the same node where it's running. Same thing for, for file keys. So we find that you point to that location on the node where the pod with the elastic agent is actually running. So if you think about it, as many nodes as you have, you're going to have as many pods. Each one of them reading information from the local uh, machine in the local uh, node. So when you have for you say magic, you need an extra one. In the next one, they will be the one, the only one collecting that extra information that is running on the deployment with one replica for you say magic. And in order to make sure that you only, only have one and you don't have duplicate information, you're gonna have this leader action. So you're gonna say. <laughs> doesn't matter which one is going to collect these metrics, but has to be only one. You need like a singleton approach. Only one mm -hmm. pod, only one agent to collect these metrics, so only once. Um, it's from the node, the audit looks. The same is from the API server. Control plane, yes. Uh, controller, manager, scheduler, and API server. Mm 